We made it to the border crossing, our first border crossing of the trip. We made it to Croatia and got another stamp in our passport. Woohoo! Woo! We're Karin and Jeremy, an average couple with average jobs and limited vacation time. When we take trips, we have one or two weeks, three if we're lucky, and we want to see and do as much as possible when we travel. Join us as we maximize our vacation time on Mapping It. Welcome to our Airbnb in Rovin. Let me show you around. Right here is the dining room. And just two steps away, the living room. We have a small kitchen over here, sink, fridge, small stove burner, and then the most important feature, air conditioning, with it being 90 degrees out. Just a short walk away, the bedroom, and the bathroom. Now let's go get some dinner. We're at the Brist Olive Grove, walking through it, and we're gonna have an amazing dinner tonight. We booked this experience several months in advance of our trip because it's very popular and known to sell out. We started our evening with a walk through the extensive olive groves on the Brist Farm, our tour was led by Paul, one of the owners. His energy and love for the land really came through during the tour. Uh, olive trees are quite tough. You've seen pictures of them in Greece coming out of the sides of cliffs and all that. But if you give them a better environment, they will grow better, okay? So what we do before we plant any new trees is we clear away the soil and we actually down to the limestone and then we get a huge digger uh, and we basically smash a hole about two meters deep and about two meters wide. And we pull out eight to 10 cubic meters of solid limestone, okay? Uh, that for goes on the tree. side. Huh? For every tree? For every single tree, my friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, then we also bring in uh, some local fresh soil, extra, and some cow manure. Now, uh, America's probably know, most people know what cow manure, cow manure. No, there's a couple of nations that's not sure. Uh, cows, you know what cows are? Okay, grass in this end of the cow, manure out the other end of the cow. Okay, so cow poop. Uh, fantastic, it's wonderful for the trees. So we layer that with the, with the soil into the holes. The last 50 centimeters, no cow poop, because fresh cow poop has too much acidity for the roots of the young but trees. Was it fresh or you... Yeah, well, no, it's dried. It's, dry, it's dried up at that stage. So. Um, so we layer it in. You'll see plenty of it around the grove. Um, so... Uh, and that, what does that do? Well, first of all, of course, it gives a source of nutrients for the tree. Secondly, it creates a nice big space for the tree to put its roots into. But thirdly, what it does is it creates effectively a space for a reservoir of water. Somewhere between four and 500 years old. So basically that's one tree. When they renovate, and that, that what they what they will do is they will make a drawing uh, and mark which bits are renovated and which bits are original. So if you have to work on the original parts in the future, you have to get more paperwork. Whereas if, for example, if there's some damage to the roof, they can just put the tile back because the roof is only actually 20 years old. This is an incredible 13th century chapel that's been partially restored. There used to be a tree growing inside of it and there's 16th century frescoes. So basically, if you come along with your camera and take a picture and you're not thinking about it, it just looks generally the way it would, although it's missing a bell. But if you're coming along in 100, 200 years from now, any conservation architect would say, okay, that's a 13th century chapel because of its structure and so on and so forth. Should have a bell, it doesn't have a bell. There's no evidence of a bell. So that means that's renovated and that's renovated, that's renovated, and probably the roof has been renovated. After the tour through the olive groves, we sat down for our dinner and olive oil tasting, guided by Lena, co-owner of Brist and Paul's wife. 
She was born and raised here and is carrying on the family business and helping it grow in a natural and sustainable way. So born and raised uh, here, surrounded by olive trees. Very, very passionate about olive oil and other food, especially Eastern food. And um, I will guide you to today through one of our special oils. So once is uh, once we take a little sip, we move it around our mouth <coughs> so it covers our tongue. And uh, usually we will take a little bit of air through our teeth, so like this, and exhale through the nose. So. And you want to uh, cough. You can cough. It's a normal reaction. Everybody coughs. So cough. And <coughs> do like this, like cough like a man. Uh, you can water on the table, so please, you know, a little bit of... Uh, little bit of, uh, of we enjoyed tasting six different olive oils and really learned a lot about what to look for in a good quality Croatian olive oil. I think it's warm enough. I think so. <laughs> what do you smell? Green. Green. <laughs> 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 Givili. We got four hours of sleep last night, which is the bare minimum we need to go explore Istria today. We are dead tired, <laughs> but there's nothing we can do about it. We have to get out and see what Istria has to offer. We're here enjoying sunrise and roving, and pretty soon we're gonna head out to Pula. Pula is a major port city on Istria's southern tip, and it's just a quick 40 minute drive from roving. We got on the road early to try to beat the traffic and the heat. Behind us is the amphitheater in Pula. Yeah, and it was built in the first century AD by the Romans. And my favorite thing about the amphitheater is something I learned about the origin of the name. Amphi means double, and theater, theater, double theater. So picture two theaters back to back with the back wall removed. And there you go, double theater. <laughs> and this site was used for obviously gladiator fights, similar to in Rome. Yeah, and when they were doing gladiator battles, the interior was filled with sand to absorb the blood. <laughs> <laughs> and the stadium seated about 25,000 people. And today it's still in use for modern concerts and it seats about 5,000 people. The amphitheater in Pula was strategically built near the sea so that it was easier to transport the massive limestone blocks used to build it. It was completed around 80 AD, about the same time as the Colosseum in Rome. After the fall of Rome, a lot of the interior materials, like seats and stairs, were raided from the amphitheater and were used in the foundations of many buildings around the city. What do you think? It's pretty cool. Yeah? Yeah. I had no idea that this existed prior to now, so, or prior to planning this trip. It's pretty big. Yeah. But also pretty small. Yeah, I don't to, think it's compared to Rome. not quite as big as the Colosseum in Rome. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome, Welcome to Pula. Pula. Well, the amphitheater's cool, but it's not open yet, and we've been up for a while, so we're going to go get breakfast. <laughs> wow, what is it? A cheese borek. Or at least similar. Something like it. <laughs> Let's looks, try it. Looks good. I don't know if I got to the cheese quite yet. 
Maybe it's potato. Hmm, could be potato. I may be mistaken. Yeah. <laughs> How is it? Pretty good. It smells so good. It smells like... Mm, I don't even know. Baked, baked phyllo. Mm. It's good. It's like not fresh out of the oven. <laughs> yeah. So I definitely think it's cheese and the cheese has like solidified. It's not like melty or whatever. It's still warm though. Um, it's definitely that farmer's cheese that they have in the area, like the cottage cheese. Oh yeah. And it's, which is like, it's like feta basically. Yeah. It's like a nice, mildly salty cheese. Mmm. Mmm. I say you already took a bite there. Yeah. What have you got? <laughs> This one is the potato version, and oh my gosh, it's it's incredible. Mmm. Unlike the other one, this one's a little warmer, softer, heavier because it's potato. But I don't know. There's got to be like leek or onion, just like mildly flavoring the potato. It's so savory and delicious. Oh, this is my favorite for sure. <laughs> Let's try this. Oh man. How is it? Yeah, this is a lot fresher. Yeah. And yeah, that like onion or leaf flavor really kicks it up a notch. <laughs> Well, we finished breakfast, so let's go explore more of Pula. What do you think? This anchor's pretty big. It's celebrating the number one employer in the town, the shipyards. What have you found? Some random ruins. Some random ruins? <laughs> right next to an apartment building. And a church. What do you think? Pretty cool. Our adventure at the ruins was cut short because gosh, it's hot out. <laughs> and we need shade. We really need shade. The, the ruins lack that. <laughs> <laughs> We're just taking a little break outside the cathedral in Pula because it's pretty hot out. Uh, we just learned a cool fact that the bell tower of the church, um, the foundation was created from stones found from the amphitheater. We just stumbled on a pretty awesome square. It's filled with a lot of stuff. <laughs> this is the Temple of Augustus, built in the first century AD, same time as the amphitheater. And this temple took a direct hit during World War II, and then the allied occupiers ended up rebuilding it. Notice how it's all like crumply and stuff. The Temple of Augustus has one of Pula's rarest natural resources, shade. <laughs> Our time in Pula is consisting of finding one shady spot after another because it is so hot. <laughs> So I think I made one of the best decisions of the day by getting a slushie. Mmm, that's good stuff. Where are you taking me? The Roman mosaic. Oh my god. This mosaic floor was discovered by locals who were cleaning up debris from bombs during World War II, and it was carefully excavated and restored right where it was found. This statue is James Joyce. He moved from Dublin to Pula in 1904, and at night, this is where he wrote Dubliners. How you doing? Good. Yeah? 
Yeah. What did we find? The Arch of Sergius. Yeah. Do you like it? Do you know anything about it? Not a whole lot. No. Like many features of the city, this arch was built in the first century AD by the Romans and marks the edge of the original Roman town. Did we find something else out today? It's hot. It's currently 35. We don't really know what that means, but we know it's hot. <laughs> After a little more wandering through town, we took a break from the heat in the nicely air-conditioned House of Istrian Olive Oil, which has an incredibly informative museum about the history of olive oil and a great audio guide. After touring the museum, we had an olive oil tasting. We're at the Istrian Olive Oil Museum. We just learned a bunch of cool facts about olive oil and its production. Now let's go do a tasting. Yeah. Let's try it. <laughs> What do you think? It's good. Very fresh. Spicy. A little bit. Bitter. <laughs> Definitely some bitterness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's good. Mm -hmm. During our guided tasting, we learned how to tell the difference between high quality and lower quality olive oil, and then we sampled five premium oils. So this is cream cheese with honey and olive oil and dried fig. Let's give it a try. I mean, like, cream cheese sounds good, and cream cheese with honey sounds good, cream cheese with olive oil sounds good, cream cheese with fig sounds good, olive oil and honey, I'm not sure yet, but we'll see. Mmm. Mmm. That's really good. It's like, it's creamy, so there's obviously like a lot of cheese, so you get that like cream cheesy texture. You have like the sweetness of the honey balanced with the like spiciness of the olive oil. It's really nice. Let me try and get that like fig in there. Oh, this is gonna be, it's gonna be a big, big amount of fig. Mm. Oh. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is good. It looks like ice cream. Not ice cream. So don't get your hopes up, but this is really good. Alright, we're done with our tasting, so let's go buy all of the things. <laughs> In addition to a museum and tastings, they have an incredible shop with tons of locally produced olive oils. Well, we bought olive the oils <laughs> <laughs> and now we're heading out of Pula. We got back on the road to head north into the heart of Istria. Well, we were headed to Motorbun, but we had to pull over to see what this panoramic viewpoint was all about and it's pretty incredible. I mean, look at that water. Stunning. Moravun is a gorgeous hill town in the heart of Istria, and we're about to check it out. It looks incredible. If this Croatian hill town looks like something that belongs in the Tuscan countryside, remember that Istria used to be part of Italy through World War II. After World War II, the Istrian peninsula became part of Yugoslavia, and after Yugoslavia split up in the 90s, it became part of Croatia. Motovun and the surrounding area are known for having incredible truffles and wine, and for being the birthplace of famous race car driver Mario Andretti. We lucked out with parking at Motovun. We, <laughs> we saw the lower parking lot and it was absolutely packed, and people were waiting for a, a shuttle bus up to the top of the hill. And you had to pay for that, it's not free. And we were like, well, maybe we should just give it a shot and see if it's possible to park at the top. So we drove up 
and we had quite a bit of luck. Yep. There were a ton of spots. <laughs> we don't know how much it's going to cost and I'm sure we pay a premium for coming up here. Yep. But it saves us a heck of a walk and it's ridiculously hot out so <laughs> this is this is just like wonderful. Where are you? <laughs> Look at what we got here. Whole town to ourselves, huh? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. But it's also super hot, so. Ugh. <laughs> this is pretty. Look at that. I love the architecture. The old buildings remind me of like Florence or parts of Italy. And I guess that makes sense considering that this used to be Italy, so. There you go. Modavuna is a great place to try truffles because it's in a truffle region. They also found the world's largest truffle by one of the shop owners here. Wow. <laughs> We enjoyed wandering the streets of Modavun, but we couldn't stay too long because we had a reservation for a wine tasting at Kabbalah Winery, so we hopped back in our car and headed 30 minutes down the road. We're at the Kabbalah Winery doing a wine tasting, and they've been in business for 130 years and only do organic wines and they have incredible charcuterie. <laughs> this is a pesto bruschetta with cheese. It's incredible. <laughs> I never thought to put pesto on in cheese like this, and then it's paired with this white wine. Wonderful. Mm. What if I don't want to smell? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think you're doing? <laughs> Something that Conan wouldn't approve of. Yeah. <laughs> so I am not worry, expert. What was that? Hold it, hold it, hold it. Don't hold it. That's annoying. That's annoying. It's Lift not it. annoying me. <laughs> Still the best thing ever. <laughs> We booked our tasting in advance online and it was well worth the effort. The winery has been in business for over 130 years and they really know how to make good wine. This Malvasia compared to the other one is mm, still, <laughs> just smells so good. It's still fruity. You can smell some of that oak. I believe it was aged. Yeah, I think slightly that's what it was aged in, in slightly in oak, yeah. Slightly in big oak barrels, so you just get a Hand of oak. Man, do I sell, sound pompous or what? But <laughs> gosh, if it's good wine, it's good wine. If you book ahead, you can enjoy a guided wine tasting and a delicious meal, but you can also show up without a reservation and enjoy a fine glass of wine with a nice view too. This is also a Malvasia wine, but it's first the grapes are macerated in amphora with the skins on for about six months. And amphora are big clay pots that they store underground, like that are buried underground. After the maceration, the wine is moved to oak barrels for aging, where it ages for... 18 months, I think. <laughs> where it ages for 18 months. And you get this beautiful golden color and you've got the oaky scent from the aging. The color comes from the maceration process in the clay pots. This is a really good wine. So this is the Amphora Tehran. Uh, so it's macerated in the Amphora for six months and then aged in oak barrels. Um, so it's, and it's local to the region. Um, for the grape and uh, it's kind of on the lighter side for a red wine so it's it's kind of got a unique taste so very smooth very easy to drink mm -hmm. 
Okay, for our last wine, we have a semi-sweet Muscat and it's paired with this delicious looking apple pie. Can you believe that? <laughs> apple pie. So let's try this. It smells good. It smells sweet. <laughs> mm. Oh, perfect temperature, nice and chilled on this ridiculously hot day. Sweet, but not too sweet. Let's dig into this apple pie. Okay, the container is hot, be careful. <laughs> <laughs> A little hot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing like tongue hockey right now. Mm, mm, mm. That is a good apple pie. Okay, that works wonderfully good. <laughs> I love it. Lunch at Kabbala Winery was wonderful, and we highly recommend making a reservation for a wine tasting to enjoy the full experience. We learned so much about Croatian wine and really enjoyed taking it slow and relaxing with some incredible views. Later in the afternoon, we made our way to another local winery, Kozlovic. We made a reservation ahead of time for a guided tour of their facilities where we learned about their fermentation and aging process. We ended with a wine tasting and an incredible view. Our Kozlovic Winery, check out this view. Kozlovich Winery has been in business since 1904. They renovated their cellar in 2012 with state-of-the-art equipment with sustainability in mind, all within a beautiful modern building situated on a hill with incredible views overlooking the vineyard. We devoured that plate. <laughs> we loved learning about and trying Croatian wines and highly recommend both vineyards. If you enjoy trying new wines, it's worth it to book a tasting in advance. In the evening, we made our way back to Rovin and enjoyed exploring the town after dark. We had a really fun day today. We're about to go find gelato and then go to bed. We're heading to Plitvica Lakes National Park today. It's a three and a half hour drive from Robin and Jeremy gets to do it. Looking forward to this drive? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's a little early. <laughs> How early is it? Almost 6.30. Ah, oh, yeah, early. Plitvica Lakes National Park is one of the top attractions in Croatia and a very popular day trip. Tickets for the park have timed entrances, and popular times often sell out during high season, so be sure to book your tickets as soon as you can. Well, we just got off the main highway, and Karin's driving now, because the roads got a little windy and she was starting to feel a little car sick. When coming from the west, like we were, as you get closer to the park, you leave the main highway and get on a narrow road with lots of twists and turns. You might also run into some massive trucks carrying logs that might surprise you around a corner. After a three and a half hour drive, we finally made it to Plitvica Lakes National Park. Yeah, that drive was a little stressful at times. It started out good, but then it like turned a little <laughs> insane there towards the end. And we started very early in the day, so we were kind of tired. 
didn't have enough caffeine. We're not coffee drinkers, so. Whee! Isn't it incredible? This is insane. This is so cool. Let's get closer. We're gonna take path B. Plitvica Lakes is Croatia's very first national park and it was created in 1949. Also, in 1991, this is where the first shots were fired when Croatia and Yugoslavia had their war. The cliffs are made of limestone, and as the water passes by the limestone, it picks up calcium carbonate, which is what makes hard water hard. And then as the water goes over the waterfalls, it deposits the calcium carbonate on the bottom, which builds up a layer of travertine, which prevents mud from forming in the bottom, which is why it's so clear. Also, the water has magnesium carbonate in it, which um, prevents the growth of algae and makes it super blue. It's pretty awesome. Water's so blue. There's a bit of a breeze today, and so far a lot of shade. So it's actually really comfortable outside today. What? what you, <laughs> we're getting closer to the water, what do you think? I think it's pretty insane. Yeah, it really is. You gotta see it. water is incredible and it's so clear you can see fish once you reach the bottom of the hill there's a boardwalk that crosses over the lake so you can get very close to the water it's pretty cool Behind us is Croatia's tallest waterfall at 62 meters. Check it out. This is incredible. Yeah, so far it's so beautiful. Just how blue the water is and you're legitimately walking above waterfalls. It's, it's just, there's no other word for it. <laughs> Incredible. The boardwalk winds through the park and over the lakes. In some places, you're crossing directly over waterfalls. It's a fairly level, easy path to follow, and there's a decent amount of shade, so it's very pleasant, even in the heat. So we finished most of the path and we're going to be getting on a boat soon. Well, we finished part of the path. <laughs> now we're going to take the boat across the lake. Even though they had three boats running, there were so many people waiting in line to get across the lake that we had to wait over an hour in line. There's a snack stand nearby and a huge picnic area, so this would be a great time to stop for lunch. We're at the lower part of the upper lakes and we're hiking around on path C. This is supposed to be some of the best stuff in the park, so let's see if it is. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, it's pretty good, isn't it? 
if you're coming here in summer, bring a lot of water because we're dying and we brought 40 ounces. The good news is you can buy it here too. So it turns out the Upper Falls at Fleet Vista Lakes is definitely incredible. Don't take too much time at the Lower Falls because you want to have enough energy to do the Upper Falls too. trying to leave Pleat Vitsa Lakes National Park, but it's taking forever. <laughs> yeah, they don't really want us to leave. Yeah, we took a boat across a lake. And then some stairs. And then some stairs, and then a very hot bus ride. Now one kilometer walk to the parking wood. After a quick snack break, we finally made it to our car and got back on the road for a two and a half hour drive to Split. So we got a few tips for Plit Vitsa National Park. Uh, first off, try to pre-book your ticket and get a time that's as early as you possibly can. Uh, usually 9 a.m. or earlier would be great because uh, after that it's a little busy. When you're in the park, try to have some patience because there's probably going to be a lot of people and a lot of pushy tour groups. The wait times for the boat can take a very long time, so just relax and go with the flow. Also, you want to budget your time well because there's a lot to see on the lower lakes, but there's also quite a bit of cool waterfalls on the upper lakes and quite a bit of hiking to do as well. So you don't want to waste all your energy doing everything for super long on the bottom part. And now we're headed to Split, so we'll see you there. We made it to Split. That parking was a little bit tricky, <laughs> but we made it and we're gonna go find some dinner. Yeah, I hope we find something tasty. Why, hello there. We're at Kitchen 5 in Split. And we just got a charcuterie board to start, off, to start off the meal. I don't know what's what, but I know two things. Truffle sausage and truffle cheese exist on this board. So I'm gonna try and find them. Also truffle sausage, I left out. Mm. Oh yeah. I was skeptical about truffle sausage. Don't be, it's wonderful stuff. For the main course, I got some octopus with roasted vegetables and a romesco sauce. Let's try it. Very well cooked, very tender. The sauce is very good. For my course, I got a rump steak with pistachio butter and potatoes. Mmm, 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 mmm. Melt in your mouth, tender. <laughs> so good. No other words. Dinner was amazing, and if you're in Split, check out Kitchen 5. It's incredible. Didn't see you there. Good morning. We're in Split today. Let's go check it out. Now we're in Diocletian's Palace, and this is the Paris style. 
The entire old town of Split was once part of Diocletian's palace and you can wander from room to room and marvel at the magnificence of this ancient Roman structure. The red granite pillars and the sphinx lining the perimeter of the peristyle are from Egypt. Behind us is Diocletian's mausoleum built in the 4th century AD. After he passed away, Constantine took over as emperor of the Roman Empire, and he made Christianity the official religion of the Roman Empire, and he decided to convert the mausoleum into a church. Diocletian was a Roman emperor in the 4th century AD. He built a giant palace here in Split as part of his retirement. This is some of the best Roman ruins this side of the Adriatic. This is so cool. This was previously the entrance vestibule to Diocletian's palace. It used to have a domed roof. It's gone now. If you visit during a busier time of day, you might be lucky enough to find traditional Kalapa a cappella singers here. It's very early in the morning. We were here last night and honestly, it was unbearable. <laughs> <laughs> right now, it's maybe 7.45. There's very few people out. This is much nicer. Yeah. As you see, it's very narrow here, and when it's packed with thousands of tourists, it's not the most pleasant thing to walk through. Ooh, we're coming up to something. <laughs> Looks like a piazza, or whatever the Croatian term is. <laughs> here we are. A lot of birds here. Not as many as in Venice, but my sister would hate it. <laughs> <laughs> That's not even 8 o'clock. It's already hot and humid. Yeah. Sweating. Shows, uh, good sign that it's going to be really comfortable later. Oh yeah, it's going to be wonderful today. After wandering the empty streets of Split, we made our way to breakfast. We're at Cherry Berry Bella for breakfast. We devoured them. It was wonderful. What do you think? Very Game of Thrones. Yeah. How would you like this to be your basement? It's pretty cool. Yeah. Temperature wise. Oh, I know. <laughs> We're in the cellars of Diocletian's palace. Better than the 90 degrees and humid upstairs. <laughs> oh, no, absolutely. <laughs> you know. Well, the dragons are a bit problematic, though, so... <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't want dragons in your basement, <laughs> would you? Not on a regular basis. Do you see the holes in the ceiling? Yeah. They used to toss sewage down here. <laughs> it was like their toilet. This place was filled to the brim. I was wondering why it was squishy. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. The main hall of the cellar is used for many modern things, from book signings to fashion shows, but it's most famous for being the location where Daenerys Targaryen locked up her dragons in Game of Thrones. No idea. Uh, it involves Toilet waste. Oh gosh. It's leftovers <laughs> that have yet to be excavated. This whole place, this whole cellar, yeah. was filled to the brim with that. The garbage and waste that filled the cellars proved to be a treasure trove for archaeologists. Many artifacts were well preserved in the waste. We're walking on the Riva next to the sea. It's even hotter now, if you could believe it. 
For an oil oil bar, we're gonna do an olive oil tasting. In my hand is a professional olive oil tasting glass. It's blue so that you can't tell what color the olive oil is. They don't want to be biased by the color of the oil because green oils and yellow oils might have the same quality. We really enjoyed our tasting at Ouya, and if you're interested in going, we recommend booking in advance. We're heading to a fortress on top of a hill, about 20 minutes away from Split. Looks pretty cool. It was actually a filming location in Game of Thrones, which is why we're going. But also it has the added benefit of having amazing views, so we're very excited. Want me to drive up that? Uh huh. Um. <laughs> that, 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 that might uh, that may be the worst Google has ever done to us. Yeah. Google has had. I kind of want to see that road from above to see where it goes to. We got you to the side entrance for staff or something. <laughs> no, we just got you to the edge of the wall. <laughs> That's what you wanted, right? You wanted the edge of the wall. <laughs> well, we made it to the fortress at Cleese. Amazing. A little bit of a hill to get up. <laughs> yeah, against all odds. We made it. Uh, Google wanted us to go some pretty interesting directions, but... Don't trust Google. We found a more major road to get to the parking lot, so... Never trust Google. <laughs> the Cleese Fortress has been around for centuries, and although it's not exactly known when it was first built, it's thought to date back to around the 3rd century AD. Hello. Welcome to my humble abode. Just a cliff-top castle is all. You know, no big deal. I like to keep it uh, simple. <laughs> very hot today. <laughs> Going to the fortress means very little shade, but there is a wonderful breeze and an incredible view. So how do you like it here? <laughs> it's pretty nice. It's cool to be on top of like a ruined fortress. I mean, it's not super ruined, it's pretty intact, but you know, still. It's nice to uh, be away from the crowds of Split. There's still people here, but it's very spread out. The one downside is there's very limited shade, which is why I'm clinging to the wall. <laughs> is that helping? Yeah, it's helping a lot. <laughs> there's also like a breeze, this is like a wind tunnel here, so it's like free air conditioning. <laughs> Over the years, the fortress has been used as the seat of power for many rulers of Croatia. In the 1500s, Cleese Fortress was used to unsuccessfully defend Croatia against the invading Ottoman Empire. And in the 1600s, the fortress was captured by Venice and the Ottomans were pushed out. The fortress has been enlarged over time and is now an open-air museum that you can walk around and explore. And these days, it's most famous for being one of the filming locations for Game of Thrones. Where are we? We're at the famous spot in Game of Thrones where they filmed in Marine. Oh, cool. Anything special about this place? They had some dragons that were attacking the city. <gasps> oh, there's the dragon! little room. 
room with a view. We were exhausted after a full day exploring Split and the Cleese Fortress, so we headed back to the Old Town for an early dinner. What did you get into now? An unknown pickled fish, probably. <laughs> so, is it your favorite thing now? It's not bad. I got truffle and steak pasta. Mm. Let's dig in. Mm. Very good. Mm. What'd you get? Back risotto. Oh yeah? That's very good. It looks scary. <laughs> it's a little fishy. Yeah, so not, head, too, not too bad. It has fish in it then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What'd you think of dinner? It was amazing. <laughs> it's pretty good. Mine wasn't what I was expecting. I was expecting, I don't even know, but it was very <laughs> good too. We were at Favola restaurant and wrapping up dinner. Now we're headed to Marion Hill for some nice views. <laughs> To Marion Hill. Woohoo! Woo. So, what do you think of Marion Hill? It's pretty nice for sunset. Yeah, the sun sets behind the hill, so you won't actually see the sun go down the horizon, but you'll see the golden hour hit the city, and it's very pretty. The hike to the viewpoint on Marion Hill is only about 15 minutes from the old town. Be prepared for a steep ascent. We stopped right at the beginning of Marion Park, but it's massive and has many trails if you want to explore further. Well, we're back at our Airbnb for the night, and apparently we have the best view ever of sunset. Check it out. This is insane. This view is ridiculous. It's even better than the hilltop view from Marion Hill, which is supposedly the best sunset view in town. Also, the birds here are insane. Well, sunset was pretty spectacular, so we're just gonna leave it at that. We're heading to VAR this morning, taking an early morning ferry. We're taking the early morning catamaran from Split to Var today. We're very excited. It takes about an hour to get there. Well, the seats are more spacious than an airplane, but it does smell a lot like smoke. We made it. Yeah. How's the journey? Pretty good. Tired? Not, not sick, but tired. <laughs> Thankful for Dramamine? Yeah. yeah. Well, we don't know if this is going to be a good idea or a bad idea, but we rented some e-bikes so that we can explore the island of Var. What do you think? Sounds like a good idea. Oh, he thinks it's a good idea. I'm All right. The, the other option we were going for was scooters, but they were sold out for the day, so we probably got the better choice for us, which is e-bikes. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> Thank you.
What do you think about the e-bikes? Well, they're pretty nice. Still yeah. a lot of work, even though it's electronic. Yeah, we've had them for all of like maybe half an hour and we started off the ride with a very, very big hill. <laughs> yeah, good way to start. So we've been on turbo the whole time so far. Yeah, pretty much. The bikes are pretty comfortable. Just because they're e-bikes doesn't mean you don't have to pedal. <laughs> yeah, still quite a bit of work. Yeah, and it's kind of like a lot of extra work just because of how hot it is here. Like both of us are kind of sweating bullets. <laughs> So, so we'll see how far we get, but we have plans for lunch near Starry Grad. So that's what we're aiming for right now. <laughs> yeah, as long as we make the lunch, we're good. Yeah, here's hoping. <laughs> we're going to Velo Grabilia. It's um, an abandoned hill town in the middle of Var. And pretty cool because um, the island of Var was populated by the Greeks early on and the Greeks devised a, um, a method of farming where they divided up the land into different plots and the unique thing about Var is that they still farm using the Greek system and so in Velo Grabilia we should be able to see some of the the lines and the ways that they divided up the system I think you can kind of see it over there if you look, all those uh, lines of rock in the ground are divided up plots of land. This town used to be famous for its lavender oil production, but after some devastating fires in the 80s, most residents left for Var Town. There are a few people that remain giving life to this nearly abandoned town. So what do you think about the e-bikes? <laughs> uh, probably more work than they're worth. Yeah, really. There's no, there's no drifting on these things. We're probably gonna go straight to lunch and then and then go to Stargard after lunch. So we're going to Horafar for lunch and we're getting their traditional Pekka. We're very excited. this view worth the hassle of e-biking? I'd say so. I mean, it's, a, it's worth having to take the last option possible. I wouldn't choose the e-bike over anything else, but if that's the only option you have, then yes, I'd say it's worth it. <laughs> yeah. Jivali. Jivali. We made it to Horovar Oh yeah. Lunch. And what are we starting with? A little appetizer plate. <laughs> with some cow's milk cheese, anchovies, sausage. All right, dig in. Let me start with the sausage. Yeah. Mm. Mm? Good stuff. We've got extra virgin, virgin and extra virgin infused. I'm gonna try the extra virgin. Mm. It's good stuff. I see you have your eye on something. <laughs> I'm gonna try an anchovy. I'm scared for you. Mm. Yeah. You know, it's actually not too fishy. Really? That's good. What's it? I don't know about that. A good that. amount of salt flavor. A lot of salt? But it's less fishy than the other one. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. So you've eaten multiple anchovies now. I've got very fish breath, but <laughs> but it's not bad. Yeah. Is this your new favorite thing now? I wouldn't say that. You gonna try that thing? Mm, I'm scared. This is a little daunting. It's dripping on me. Oh, 
Okay. <laughs> wow. Just a minute. Just a minute. That is salty. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Mine was crunchy. I don't know about yours. Was yeah, a little bit. Crunchy. Had had some bones in it. Yeah. I don't know if anyone's gonna believe me, but I ate the other one too. The other one was very fishy and not very much like herring. Yeah, not something I really want to put in my mouth herring. again. Yeah. <laughs> Lunch has arrived. Yeah. What is it? It's a Pekka. What's a Pekka? Well, it's cooked under a dome. An iron bell. Iron bell. Yeah? <laughs> it's lamb. It's lamb and veal, I think. With vegetables. It smells incredible. It looks really tender. Yeah? Mm hmm So it's good, huh? Very good. So tender. <laughs> Pretty good. Yum, yum. Oh my gosh, look at this food. <laughs> What'd you do? Vegetables are hot. <laughs> Yeah. They look pretty hot. We'll give them some time to cool. I mean, they were literally cooked <laughs> under hot coals. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Each course that we've had comes with a wine perfectly paired with it. And this one is a Plavitz Mali, which is a local grape similar to a Zinfandel. And aged in oak barrels so it's nice and oaky and it actually came from the vineyard that's literally just a few meters away from us right over there mm. it's good stuff and it goes perfectly with grilled meat traditional pekka takes several hours to cook under the iron bell so it's very important to make a reservation ahead of time okay there is no denying the meat here is incredible but I think possibly the winner and hero of this whole dish is the vegetables. They just absorbed all the meat juices, <laughs> flavors. They're so savory. This is, it, this right here is the best potato I have ever had in my entire life. I am ruined for potatoes from now on. <laughs> How do you feel? Exhausted. Exhausted? Doesn't even look like we made a dent. <laughs> I swear. I ate so much. <laughs> well, I think it's safe to say that I have the meat sweats. But hopefully this watermelon will counteract that a little bit. <laughs> this restaurant wasn't too busy during lunch, but it's very popular for dinner, so be sure to book far in advance. The menu was a set price of 300 kuna per person and includes drinks. We just finished lunch, and I cannot move. <laughs> the Bike. problem is, we have bikes. Yeah, biking back to bar is going to be... Probably a challenge for and, us. And not happening. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're probably going to find a taxi. Oh, if we're lucky, we have to find a taxi that will also take the bikes. <laughs> so if we can't find one, we're going to be up a creek. Yeah. <laughs> also, to make matters worse, we just found out that it feels like 101 outside. <laughs> we biked 10 minutes down the road to Starigrad, the island's original settlement dating back over 2,400 years ago. 
Although it wasn't far from the restaurant, it took a lot of effort to get there. It felt like we had eaten a full Thanksgiving dinner and then decided to bike in 100 degree heat. Basically, we were struggling. How are you doing? I can't. <laughs> I know. After wandering through the old town and enjoying the architecture, we got a taxi back to Var Town. We made it back to Var Town. We ended up finding a taxi that was big enough to hold our bikes. So. Saved us a lot of work. Yeah, oh my gosh. When it's 101 degrees outside, biking is not an option. <laughs> well, we found a beach. It's actually the first beach we stumbled upon in Var. And I'm sure there are probably better beaches, but when it's 100 degrees, beggars can't be choosers, so we hopped right in. What do you think about this beach? Uh, not so great on the rocky beach part, but the water was very cool and very comfortable. Yeah, and we knew it was a rocky beach because basically that's what you're going to find when you're in the Adriatic or the Mediterranean. It's not really sandy beach country, so that's why we've got our water shoes. Got our tickets, booking it to our boat, heading back to Split for the night. What did you think of our? Very pretty. Mm -hmm. Very exhausting. Very hot. Very hot. Yeah. We have our sights set on gelato. It's right ahead of us. What'd you get? Well, it appears to be my absolute favorite combo. What's we that? have Watermelon, followed by melon. <laughs> <laughs> so refreshing on this ridiculously hot day. And we got it from Aroma in Split. So if you come here to Split, you better try this. We took our time wandering through Split, enjoying our gelato on our way back to our Airbnb. Hello, welcome to our second Airbnb. Let me show you around. Right here we have our entryway, a few chairs for seating or storage as you can see. Excuse the mess, we've already been here a few days. Um, over here, got a nice TV in case you got some time to just relax. Turns out you can watch a lot of American television because um, it's, it's not dubbed in Croatian or anything, so just has some subtitles. Uh, over here we have the bed. Very comfortable pillows. It's been a nice change for the trip. <laughs> um, over here is the dining room. And our kitchen, which has all the essentials, including a very large fridge and freezer. For all the water you're gonna need for the 90 degree heat. And the freezer even has ice. Which is a nice surprise. Also the very essential air conditioning, which works wonderfully for the heat. Over here, got a bit of a coat closet and a bathroom with all the essentials, including a washer in case, in case you want to do laundry. As you can see, it's very spacious. There's also a terrace with a very nice view. Well, today was a long, tiring day. And it's not exactly what we expected. No. I mean, we originally planned to rent scooters, but they were 
they were out of scooters. Yeah. So we had to resort to e-bikes and... Not ideal. No, I think we thought that with an e-bike you would just be able to like go without working. Yeah. You know? Coast basically. Coast. Basically coast and do have the bike do the work for you. Yeah. But that's not the case with an e-bike. You have to... You basically have to constantly pedal is what we found. Yeah. Like even if you're like you just want to glide. Yeah. You can't because the e-bike will just like, yeah, put on the brakes. We ended up we ended up biking over 20 kilometers today, so we're just gonna wrap up our day watching the sunset from our rooftop terrace and enjoying some wine. Yeah. Givali. Givali. We're almost to Dubrovnik, but we had to stop one last time because this view is incredible! Yeah! <laughs> the realities of travel. Sometimes you have a very, very long walk with luggage to get to your accommodation. Not so bad right now, but I can imagine it's going to be terrible when we leave. Because it's all downhill right now. Welcome to our final Airbnb of the trip. We're in Dubrovnik. Let's check it out. First we have a kitchen, Eden, Eden kitchen. Table, sink, stove, oven, fridge, pretty good size. Right off the kitchen is a bedroom. Pretty simple. Got AC in here. Very important. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Nice, on. nice back. Yeah. <laughs> Got another bedroom. Also has its own AC. I like the bed decorations. Very nice decorations. Yes. Very important AC. <laughs> it's 38 outside. Bathroom. Usual stuff. Typical things you'd find in a bathroom. And then up the stairs. You mean more stairs. Walk your step. Not always a railing. <laughs> <laughs> Got a little living room space, some couches, chairs, TV, and air conditioning. And air conditioning. <laughs> and the best part got our own patio. Oh, yeah. Check out the view. So I think we're gonna have a good time here. Yeah, it's gonna be wonderful. We got three days, so plenty of time to enjoy it. <laughs> There's um, a lot of stairs involved in this apartment. First, stairs to get up on the main road. And then there's stairs inside the apartment, obviously, because we are on a rooftop terrace here. But I'd say overall, absolutely worth it because look at this view, it's incredible. What do you think? Definitely worth it. Did you say, would you say I did a good job? Very much. Yes, I thought so. We had a great time relaxing at our Airbnb and now we have reservations at Canova de Brava, so we're headed there. We just arrived at Canova de Brava. It's about a 10 minute drive from the parking garage in Dubrovnik. 
we ordered a half lamb, half octopus pekka, so we're very excited. And we also ordered a Greek salad to go with the meal because it only comes with potatoes. And then they also gave us some tasty grappa. Mine is uh, cherry Yep. or black cherry, I'm yep. not sure. Givelier. Mine is walnut. <laughs> Mmm, that's smooth. <laughs> We're starting off with some tasty Greek salad and some homemade bread. Let's try this salad. <laughs> mm. Is it good? Mm-hmm. It looks fresh. Very fresh, very nice, very good cheese. Nice, nice salty feta. So it is feta. I feel like it. So this Greek salad is incredible. It's chilled, so it's super refreshing on this hot day. This cheese is incredible. It is better than feta. And I feel like that's, that's a hard thing to accomplish because feta is so good. Mm. soft, creamy, basically melts in your mouth, so it's a good spreadable cheese. Better than cream cheese, of course. Cream cheese is not an eating cheese, it's like a doing things with cheese. I could eat this straight. Mm. Smooth, a little bit salty, perfect. Oh, incredible. <laughs> what on earth? did you order? So I got the octopus pekka. So it's cooked under an iron dome. That is a real octopus. Yes, it's a very real octopus. <laughs> Let's try this out. Okay. That's very good. Oh yeah? Yeah. Are you going to try the face? <laughs> Maybe later. <laughs> it's um... It's a little more, it's a little closer to stewed octopus than grilled, but okay. it's, it's got enough like char on it to be like better than uh, stewed, which sure. I don't really like a whole lot. <laughs> but it's it's very, it's very tender. You it's certainly have your experience with octopus, it's, don't you? It's probably the most tender octopus I've had. Oh yeah? Mm -hmm. So like, is that a good thing? Texturally, it's very good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Flavor wise? Mm -hmm. Very good flavor. Ah. A bunch of vegetables, those look incredible. Yeah, let's try this potato. Mm. Yeah? Very good potato. <laughs> Looks good. I mean, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was not brave enough to try a whole octopus. It's a little scary for me. So I stuck with the lamb pekka, and this smells incredible kind of have had a lot of lamb lately, but I'm not mad at it. So let's dig in. Mm. Cuts like butter. Juicy. Mm. 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 That is good stuff. Tender, juicy, flavorful not as crispy as the pekka we had on var, but very good. I'm gonna dig into one of these potatoes because the potatoes are like a true sign of quality pekka. <laughs> mm, I'm a fan of these potatoes. They have soaked up all of the juices. They're, they're like charred and like golden, so good. Let's see if I can break into the head of this thing. That's disgusting. <laughs> what a way to phrase it. <laughs> There's definitely something else other than, other than just meat in there. I don't need to see that, actually. You're gross. A little fishier. Oh, yeah? But not bad. Doesn't surprise Still me. Still good. I like the tentacles better. <laughs> Are they called tentacles? Yeah. That's... Okay. <laughs> it's reminiscent of eating from the body of a crab, where you've got all that like, kind of 
know, guts and stuff. <laughs> you make it sound so appetizing. <laughs> yeah, very much. <laughs> now that we're at the end of the meal, are you happy with your choice? Oh, absolutely. This is just incredibly flavorful. Every bite is like melt in your mouth. Delicious. Like, you cannot go wrong with ordering the lamb, and I'm so happy. <laughs> what about you? I'd say it's probably the best octopus I've had on this trip. And you've had how many? Uh, well, I've had probably two octopus. Including this one, one? One stuffed squid, so. This is even better than the stuffed squid, huh? Narrow margin. <laughs> We just finished up at Canoba de Brova and the food was very good. Yes, very good. We both recommend ordering ahead of time to get the pekka. Whatever pekka you choose, it'll be spectacular. <laughs> 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 so the road to drive there is like kind of narrow and sketchy. So uh, you better be confident behind the wheel. And if you're not, take a taxi. Yeah. Or the gondola. Or the gondola. If you take the gondola up, it's about a 20... Google says it's about a 20-minute walk from where the gondola drops you off to the restaurant. Yeah. And we were considering that, but it was just so hot today that we chose to drive because we have a car. <laughs> just checking out Sunset now, and mm -hmm. we're going to wrap it up at our apartment. Yeah. So enjoy this beautiful view, just like we are, and we'll see you tomorrow. Yep. There are a lot of stairs and hills in the old town, so you gotta really pick wisely as to which ones you walk down. Because if you go down, you're certainly gonna have to go up if you wanna see something else at the top of the hill. Absolutely. You don't wanna do that too many times. Yeah, you're gonna end up doing like, like dozens and dozens of flights of stairs. <laughs> Dubrovnik flourished in the 15th and 16th centuries as a major port on the Mediterranean. One of the best things you can do in Dubrovnik is take your time wandering through the old town, there are beautiful buildings and hidden gems around every corner. We found it. We are at the Game of Thrones Walk of Shame stairs. And they're behind me. Shame! Shame! And a fun fact about this is that when they were filming this, you can, right, if you look, you can see all these restaurants and things that exist. And all the doors and windows looking out from the apartments above. When they were filming this, they had to pay everyone to close for the duration of filming, which is a lot of money because restaurants would lose out on a lot of income those days. And then they had to keep the secret from the public. <laughs> Shame. Shame. <laughs> Shame. We just got breakfast from the Mlinar on the Stratton. So let's dig in. We got an apple strudel. Very good, very flaky. Apple y and strudel y? Yep. <laughs> Always good. The last thing we got was a cheese burek. We got the small size. Mmm. We haven't had a cheese burek since since Pula. It was pretty good. I'd say it's better than the Pula one, but just generally as far as burek goes, it doesn't top the stuff we had in Sarajevo. Mm. Very good though. I'm happy. We made it to the top of the Dubrovnik city walls. Let's go explore. Walking the mile and a quarter distance around the city walls is the top thing to do in Dubrovnik. 
You can do it in about an hour if you're very fast and there are limited crowds, but we suggest slowing down and taking your time to enjoy the views. We took about two hours to complete the loop. What are you doing in there? I'll show you. You can come. <laughs> Yeah. A lot of Dubrovnik was destroyed during the siege in the 90s, but what behind me, this was destroyed actually in the earthquake in 1667 and they decided not to rebuild and have green space instead. A lot of this area behind me was used for filming of Game of Thrones and with a lot of equipment and no elevators you can imagine how much work that was. <laughs> Game of Thrones isn't the only thing that was filmed in Dubrovnik. This was also a filming location in Star Wars The Last Jedi and 2018's Robin Hood, and a nearby island was used for the filming location for Mamma Mia, Here We Go Again. There are lots of interesting things to see from the old town walls, like views of Bouja Bar, a bar on the cliffs outside the wall that's a popular spot for swimming and watching sunset. It's really cool to be on the walls because you can be at roof level with a lot of the buildings. And you'll notice that there are two different colors of tile. We've got the old browner color and the newer, more orange color. And a lot of the roofs were destroyed and then repaired after the siege in the 90s. So that's how you tell. We have to go up a lot farther. Oh yeah, there's definitely a hill in our future, if so, not multiple. It's very tiring. Yeah, and it's like, what, only just a little after nine in the morning? I couldn't imagine what it's like at noon or yeah, something. Yeah, and there's already no shade, so. Yeah. I'd say the stairs were worth it for this. Best thing about being high up is the wind and the view. Absolutely. We're almost done with our walk. We can see where we entered. It's diagonally right behind us. Probably the biggest things to do are come early have patience, and bring a lot of water. <laughs> Guess what we found? Another Game of Thrones filming location. Is this a riddle? Well, we're wrapping up our time on the city walls. <laughs> I'd say we're pretty ready for it. So we're going to take a little rest break at the apartment and then go to lunch. Yeah. All the fountain water in Dubrovnik is drinkable. And super cold. <laughs> All right. 40 ounces of water. Mm. Colder than we can get it in our apartment. We hiked a lot of stairs today and we did 99 flights yesterday and didn't even get gelato. So we're gonna have to make up for that today. This is the first of at least multiple. <laughs> what did you get? I got sea salt caramel and dark chocolate. Oh my gosh, that sounds incredible. Mm. Perfect combination. Pretty good, huh? We came to the Taj Mahal in Dubrovnik for lunch and I know what you're thinking, there is no Taj Mahal 
in Croatia. This is just a restaurant. This is the name of the restaurant. And they specialize in Bosnian food, not Croatian food. <laughs> so it's like a real mind bender. But we ordered the Genghis Khan plate. It's supposed to be a big grilled meats plate. We've had a couple of those while we were here on this trip. So let's see how this one stacks up against the rest. To drink, I got a pee pee. And this girl on the bottle might look familiar to some of you. This is modeled after Pippi Longstocking. Yes, the Swedish child. Let's give it a try. Mmm, it's very good. It's like a light orange pop. It's very fresh. It tastes better than Fanta, like fresher than Fanta. Like real orange juice with uh, bubbles. It's very good. So we got our food. It's the Genghis Khan plate. It's definitely a lot of meat. It looks pretty good. Yeah. What are you gonna go for first? I think we gotta try the chapati and compare it. Absolutely. Mm, I'll call it. <laughs> It's got like the perfect grilled flavor. I can't even explain it. Is it better than any of the other chivapi we've had before? Oh, they've all been so good. It's, yeah. it's almost like a different flavor. Really? I, I don't know what to say about it. <laughs> it's like that charred grilled flavor. Mm. It's so good. You gotta try it. Ah. Trying to steal my stuff. <laughs> I see what you're saying. It's definitely got like like that char grilled yeah. charcoal sort of yeah. flavor to it. Very good. Absolutely very different than anything else we've had before. I, I think you're right. None of the chivapi are really comparable to each other, but they're all very good. I think, ooh, I see a spicy patty right here. I'm gonna go for this one. Sure. And I'm gonna have it with cheese now because this cheese is just incredible. <laughs> this cheese makes everything better. Everything is better with this cheese on it. It's almost like a whipped spreadable feta. Yeah. Without being overly salty, but still having a lot of flavor. It's incredible. The meat is incredible. I can't wait to dig in. <laughs> we just finished up at Taj Mahal. Food was really good. Get the cheese. <laughs> Hey, mac cheese with a J. Lunch was so tasty. Very good. Very good. We lucked out because it's literally a one minute walk from the Airbnb that we have. If you're in Dubrovnik, hit up Taj Mahal. There was actually a bit of a wait. So even for lunch, which is surprising. So maybe consider making reservations like we did. Or just go a little early, like yeah. 11 or something. It's fine, 11, yeah. 11.30. Exactly. So. After a rest at our Airbnb, we headed to Banya Beach, just outside the old town walls of Dubrovnik. We had a great time at Banya Beach. We spent what, like, how long here? Mm, hour and a half to two hours? Yeah, something like that. Great amount of time. The water was freezing, but we did some laps and it felt really nice. Yeah. And uh, if anyone tells you this is the sandy beach, yeah. it is just like any other beach here. Mostly rocks. Mostly rocks. Bring your water shoes. We did not and we wish we had. One reason we picked to come to Banya Beach is because it was a 10 minute walk from the old town. Another reason is that it has an incredible view. And then finally, the water is just ridiculously clear here. So many shades of blue, check it out. What'd you do? Got gelato. <laughs> What'd you get? I got a lemon pie. How it's is like it? the lemon Girl Scout cookies. Ooh. Yeah, it's very good. What flavor did you get? Mmm. Maxi King, which is like a type of candy bar that we've seen here. Mm. Huh. It's like fresh cream gelato. 
with chocolate and hazelnut. Sounds good. Mm. And it's it's got nougat in it. <laughs> wow. I'm a fan. After the beach, we went back to our apartment. We got cleaned up, we relaxed in the AC, and now we're ready to go find some dinner. And I think after dinner, we're gonna try and go up, up Mount Surd on the gondola to maybe see sunset if we're lucky. Yeah. We are at Fast Food Republic and they do burgers really well here, so that's what we got. I got the Burger of Thrones burger, <laughs> and Jeremy got the spicy calamari burger. So let's dig it. Looks messy. It does, it's dripping. <laughs> Messy. Messy. Very good. Oh yeah, get this burger. <laughs> oh my gosh. Let's get into this Perfectly crispy calamari. Oh yum. Is it spicy? Mm. Mildly. Okay. I don't know if it's going to be classified as a burger, but it's the best burger I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> That's really saying something. Yeah. Look at that thing. Just a pile of calamari yeah. right there. We finished up dinner. The burgers were amazing. Highly recommend. And now we are going up to the top of Mount Surd on the gondola. We got our tickets. Now we just have to wait for the gondola. If you buy your tickets in advance, you can skip the line. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> the, the majority of the line is people waiting to buy their tickets. And there's a place near the... Uh, the main entrance. The main entrance to the town where you can buy your tickets in advance. After a bit of a wait in line for the gondola, we finally made it to the top of Mount Surd. And we took a bit of a hike to the left of where the gondola drops you off, and you get to this incredible viewpoint. We're gonna hang out here and watch the sun go down. We are on the hunt for breakfast. We're probably gonna stop at the Mlinar that we went to yesterday because we can't really find anything else that's within our general walking path. So, that's probably what we're gonna do today. It was pretty good yesterday, so let's go check it out. So we had some success at the bakery today, I'd say. We got four things. Well, three edible things and a pulpy. We've never had pulpy before, but I assume it's orange juice. By the looks of it, it has pulp, hence the name. So the first thing, I know, we'll see. The first thing we got, ooh, heavy. It's a meat burek. Look at that thing. Mm, smells really good. It's made with beef. Mm. 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 Yeah. So this is what it looks like on the inside. I'd say they're maybe a little skimpy on the meat, but that could just be the spot that I chose. Sure. Um, the meat is not as fall apart as what we had when we were in Sarajevo. Yeah. So I'm gonna have another bite. Mm. Yeah, they're maybe a little skimpy with the meat, but the flavor is all there. You can tell this has been maybe sitting around a little. It's not like the warmest, softest thing, but oh my gosh, mm, really good. And, what do you got next? Well, I don't know what follows meat, so maybe I'll have some pulpy. <laughs> Give it a good shake. <sighs> There's Bird a attack? yeah, low, low. <gasps> <laughs> Low flying birds are a real hazard. <laughs> They're a real hazard here. And I just felt maybe a rain. Yeah, I, what it's I definitely hope, starting to rain. I hope it's a raindrop. 
It is a raindrop. Because Jeremy had an issue yeah. yesterday. Yep. <laughs> it is a raindrop. Yeah, it's a raindrop. Oh, that pulpy is good, and I don't mind the pulp. It's not like American pulp. It's better. It's not American. So let's get this show on the road. It's got an accent. <laughs> The next pulpe. <laughs> the next thing we got is basically a uh, pan au chocolat, but they called it a chocolate pillow. Oh, that makes sense. Mm. I bet that's a direct translation. <laughs> mm. Very good, but they went a little too light on the chocolate for me. Yeah. The last one, by Jeremy's request. <laughs> yeah. We got a uh, a filled donut. I believe it's filled with fruit. Oh wow. I mean, like, jam. As opposed to, like, a Bavarian cream kind of thing? Yeah. So I'm going to give it a taste. It does. It feels very light, so I feel like they maybe underfilled Skimped it. Skimped on the filling. Yeah. Nope. Nothing. Very, this very is, dry inside. It's a dough donut. I think the filling's on the other side. Oh. I mean, the donut itself is tasty. Mmm. There we go. It's like a mixed fruit flavor. Sure. Overall, very good. Let's dig in before it downpours. <laughs> yeah. We've been attacked. We're leaving the old town and heading to the nearby fort. We were trying to find the path to the fort, which is up there. And we stumbled upon a bunch of Game of Thrones filming locations that take place right here. This is Pile Bay, right over here. Pile Gate is right over there. And this area stood in for like Blackwater Bay and um, a bunch of other places. This is where um, they sent Marcella off to be elsewhere. <laughs> Jamie came home. Here, they were filming a scene over there and there were some kids that were cliff jumping off of it. And they thought, you know what, it just looks really cool. So we're gonna let the kids stay and they kept them in the show. How cool is that? That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so this is just, this is a pretty busy place as far as Game of Thrones goes. When they were filming season eight of Game of Thrones, they were doing a lot of filming near the wall and stuff. And they had to close the streets near that and they had to close the wall because they didn't want people to look over and get spoilers for the finale. How crazy is that? Yeah, and there's very few instances where they closed the wall. Yeah, very else, few so. and it would have cost a lot of money. Yeah. So basically, it's a huge ordeal. <laughs> After exploring Pile Bay, we hiked up 200 steps to Fort Lavrinets, or as it's known in English, the Fort of St. Lawrence. This is Dubrovnik's oldest fortress and helped protect the town for centuries. Entrance to the fort is included in the city walls ticket, so be sure to stop by for epic views overlooking Dubrovnik. This fort was used for a lot of uh, filming locations for Game of Thrones. They used the, uh, the area here to take shots of the city and the bay, and then they also used some of the internal parts of the fort for, um, for scenes as well. And we're heading to the Pelishots Peninsula for some wine tastings. Seems like good timing because the rain just picked up, so we're glad to be in the car. It's an easy and very scenic drive along the coast from Dubrovnik to the Pelishots Peninsula. This area is known for having fantastic wines. There are a lot of wineries you can visit for a tasting, and most are perfect for a spontaneous visit if you're only interested in buying a glass or two of wine. But if you want a full tour and guided tasting, be sure to contact the wineries in advance to make reservations because they can get very busy. We made it to our first stop, Matushko Winery. It is a very nice place. We are currently in the cellar here. It is fully booked. <laughs> We could have made a reservation in advance and then we would have possibly had a table to do a full tasting, but we're kind of winging it today. So we get to do a self-guided walk around the cellar and then we can go upstairs and buy a glass of wine. So let's explore the cellar. One of the cool things about this winery is that if you do make reservations or if you come with a group, you can actually do a wine tasting down here in the cellar. You can tell by the size of this place that they are a very large producer. Yeah. I think 
possibly this is one of the biggest wineries we've ever been to. The walls of the cellar right here are lined with amphora, which is an ancient clay pot type thing that they used to store wine in back in the very old days. I got a glass of the Plavats Mali wine. It's a red wine. Mm -hmm. Made with the Plavats Mali grape. Correct, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it smells very deep, like a very yeah. deep like cherry and oak. <laughs> so let's try it. All right. It's actually a little tart, maybe. Maybe tannins. Yes. <laughs> yeah, definitely tannins. Is it good? Yeah. Let me try mine. Mine looks, mine looks pretty good. I got the Dingach Reserva. Reserva usually means that it's been aged longer than the standard, so, because they also have a Dingach, but I got the Reserva. <laughs> Oaky, black cherry. Let's try it. Ooh, that is dry. <laughs> Oh, I really need some like salami or something that yeah. is like so dry. Yeah. Yeah, that will age well, I think. <laughs> if it seems like the cellars were large when we were touring them, it's because they are. This place has started out small like most wineries do, and it grew to be one of the top destinations for Croatian wine. So we really know how to pick them, don't we? Yeah. This is our start. Also, they have a tasting shop in Dubrovnik, so we didn't have to drive out here if we didn't want to. It's really cool to see where it comes from, but if you don't have a car, just stick around Dubrovnik and go to their shop. We enjoyed our glass of wine while we waited for the storm to pass and had great views of the vineyard. Eventually the rain moved on and we got back on the road. We're at Gurgic Winery on the Pelishats Peninsula, and this is possibly the home of the godfather of Croatian wine. <laughs> Mike Gurgic went to the US and learned winemaking techniques in California. And in the 1976 Judgment of Paris, in a blind taste testing, his wine won out and beat top world contenders, well-established wines and that put American wine on the map. And then he took his knowledge back to Croatia and opened a vineyard here to try and make Croatian wine become world renowned. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so we're here, we're gonna go try some of his wine. They have two wines here, a Plavac Mali and a Poshup. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. It's very windy out and rainy, so we're gonna hang out inside today. And we did the tasting, which is one Plavac Mali and one Poshup. And this is the Poshup, nice white, been aged slightly in barrels, oak barrels. So, mm. well, that is a good wine. Crisp, refreshing, drinkable, little tiny little bit oaky. This is the Plavats Mali, similar to what we had the last place. Mm. It's a red wine again. Aged in oak? Yeah. And then aged an additional two years? Yeah, aged an additional two years outside the oak barrel. It definitely seems a little different from the last one we had. Maybe a little less tannins. Okay, yeah. so more drinkable. So yeah, pretty good. Givali. <laughs> The winery is situated on a beautiful peninsula and we really enjoyed walking the grounds and taking in the views. We eventually headed back to Dubrovnik. If you're planning to head to Dubrovnik on a weekend, be sure to give yourself a lot of time. We encountered a ton of traffic heading back into town on a Friday evening. Oh, we got our appetizer plate with some meats and cheeses. I thought you said you were done with meats and cheeses. Well, it's been a while. <laughs> you're destroying Struggling. Yeah. Good. That's pretty good. Try the cheese. Yeah. 
Average. Average. <laughs> Food has finally arrived after a really, really long wait. And I have the gnocchi with wild boar. It looks very good, smells very good. Let's dig in. I'm gonna try this wild boar first. It's very tender, not overly so. I've had wild boar before, so it's okay. <laughs> Let's try the gnocchi. It's a pretty good gnocchi. A little doughy, a little sticky. Not, I'm not the most impressed with this meal after waiting an hour and a half for it. So, hopefully yours is a little better. <laughs> I got the beef cheeks. Ooh. Looks very good. Wow. Hot. <laughs> Pretty tender. Could yeah. use a little more seasoning though. One bad day. Not so, very well seasoned overall. Okay, that's a bummer. Well, we just finished up dinner at Canoba Jesuit. I don't know what to say. This just wasn't great. Yeah, the seasoning was just not great at all, really, or existent. Like nothing was seasoned. Yeah. Wait staff was very nice, but the Yes, the server was wonderful. Yeah. Overall, I'd say it was just a very average experience for us. Yeah. So we're gonna try and uh, remedy that by getting some tasty gelato. <laughs> I got some Snickers Ooh. and pistachio. Mm. Tastes like Snickers. Let's see if we can get the pistachio. Hard to tell. It's, it's, it's very creamy. It's underneath the Snickers, so it's hard to get a straight flavor of it. What'd you get? <laughs> Mine's melting. I got vanilla, it's very good, very, very good, like a vanilla bean. And then on bottom here, I got cookie, which is like a cookie gelato with chocolate swirls. Like a so, Biscoff cookie or something like that? Um, I really can't distinguish what type of sure. cookie it is. Just cookie. Just cookie, <laughs> very good. Mm. There's a beautiful sunset happening right now. So we're gonna hang out with a glass of ship, watch the sunset, and then pack for our flights home. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> You've sat on the Iron Throne. Yep. Are you now king of King's Landing? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, we've got our bags all packed and we're ready to go. Got a very, very long uphill hike to get to the car. Yep. So. <laughs> Won't have much broken. No, we are going to be exhausted. Let's see. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> This is a horrible hill to walk with 50 pounds of luggage, probably 30 pounds of backpack. <laughs> yeah. But it's super scenic, so at least that's a win. <laughs> Heavy bags, large hill. We're almost there. <laughs> Only took us about 35 minutes. Yeah. Now we have to pay for parking and get out of here. We made it back to our car and we're getting packed up and all ready to go. We learned one more unfortunate lesson along the way. 
if you're gonna park for longer than maybe I think 12 Probably hours. 12 hours. If you're gonna park for longer than 12 hours, get the daily ticket. Yeah. Because otherwise, if you're gonna. You're gonna pay them an insane amount. Yeah, yeah. So we learned the hard way. We had daily tickets for the other days we were here, and we just didn't consider that it would add up so much. Yep. So that's our fault. Yes. <laughs> Learn from our mistake. We're almost to the airport, but we found a viewpoint just before we got there. Yeah, it's a great way to end our time in Croatia. Why, hello there. We're at the Brist Olive Grove doing a vineyard. Uh, okay. Jivali. Did I say that right? <laughs> what are we saying? So we did stuff today. Yeah. And we did stuff. Okay. <sighs> it's too early for this, you know? What are we doing today? Oh my gosh. First of all, we're getting not enough sleep. <laughs> And how much sleep did we get? Four hours. Probably less than four hours. Less considering the people upstairs. Yeah, the people upstairs were the worst. We're at the cathedral in Pola. Right. Pola. <laughs> Pola. And they. Well, Motivern. And I don't remember the other part. Motivern. Big trucks. Scene two. Yeah. <laughs> Am I awkward enough yeah. for you? Hi, I'm Jerry. And this is Clark. No. <laughs> what? <laughs> this is what we call a waterfall. <laughs> no. Behind us is behind us behind us is Diocletian's mother. <laughs> Why did you go for longer? What did you just do? Attacking the castle. You attacked the castle. <laughs> oh, look, a dragon! Ah! There you go. Yes, put it. <laughs> Hair is going crazy. Luggage is lugging. And it's hot. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> Jeremy was a rude butt and just shamed me. <laughs> How dare you? Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Mm. We're gonna try and go. <sighs> Best thing about being high up is the wind is heavier. Sorry, my hair is going crazy. <laughs> This is where the dragons were kept in that secret tower and, and kind of kidnapped from Daenerys. By who? I don't remember. The wizardy the guy? The wizardy guy. <laughs> well, sorry, it got distracted by the flags over there. <laughs> <laughs> Spilled some. Powder trigger is a dangerous thing to try. Yeah. We're trying to find the path to Fort Lovren. Love. Hey, look, a cactus. Ouch. <laughs> we're, at we're at Gurgich Winery. <laughs> if it seems like the cellars were large when we were... <laughs> <laughs> this is the realities of the Stradun in the early morning. Tons of cars. 